So if you'll take a look down here, I've got a 13 millimeter socket on a 13 millimeter bolt stuck through one of those holes. <clears throat> I'm going to get my big crescent on that nut, and then with my right hand, I'm going to use it to hold the socket in place. Uh, if you can find a six point socket, it'll be much easier to get to stay on the bo bolt. This unfortunately is a 12 point. Kind of hard to come across a, uh, a six point in a 3 8 drive. So, you'll want to stick that in there, hold it with your right hand in place. If you don't, it's likely to uh, get pulled off and then drop down the skid someplace. So hold it with your right hand, and then with your left hand, uh, we'll break loose that big nut. Okay, so see, here's the fan clutch and fan removed. Uh, if you're seeing any issues with your temperature rising when uh, towing or under light loads, going up hills, especially when it's not particularly hot out or even when it's hot out, uh, and you're seeing your temperature gauge climbing up, you know, up to the three-quarter mark or anything above uh, halfway, really, you should think about replacing your fan clutch. It's pretty typical to see them going bad at around 100,000 miles. So just something good to do, a little bit extra cost, and you're in here anyways. Um, so I'd recommend doing it if you think you might even need it, and they do go bad with a fair degree of frequency. So we look over here now. We got the... Uh, fan off it uh, threads on right here to this either pulley you can see the uh, 13 millimeter I was using to hold it in place and generally speaking uh, if you can get that off before taking the fan shroud off you'll probably save a little bit of time but we do gain a fair bit of access space in here so if we didn't pull everything else out and then try to get the radiator out you know we'd still be down to about here so um, if you can get the fan off you know you might give it a Generally, I find it easiest to take everything off, and it makes it easier to clean, you know, the intercooler and uh, and take care of that little leak that we're going to see. So, what's up next? So we're going to pull off the serpentine belt. Generally, the easiest way to do that is to put a wrench on it right here, torque it over. We'll get then off of the uh, alternator pulley right there, and then I'll just pull the whole thing off. And then from there, uh, we'll dig on in and we'll pull off this idler and we'll get down to uh, the crank and all that other stuff too. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do this. It's kind of a two-handed operation, so it's going to be difficult to show you. But I'm going to go down here. I'm going to push down on this wrench. That's going to take some tension off the belt. And then while I'm pushing down there, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pull this off. And as soon as I've got that off, I'll be able to get everything else off. But for right now, it's a two-handed operation. My left hand's going to go there, my right hand over there. So, here I go. All right, so I got that off. You can see I've got it pulled over there and starting to take the tension off. So uh, one more time, I'll push down on a little bit, and I'll just pull the belt right off of the alternator here. All right, and there you see I got the belt all loose. I can go ahead and pull it on out of the way. So an important note here, uh, these two uh, serpentine belt idlers are reverse threaded. So these two are reverse threaded, they're a 16 millimeter head. This one is not reverse threaded on the tensioner and it's got a 15 millimeter head. So the ones with the 16 millimeter head are reverse threaded. We'll run into a similar thing down in here where there's two uh, time belt idlers and they are also reverse threaded. So go ahead and make sure to uh, turn these clockwise to unscrew them. Okay, so I've got the uh, the fan idler removed there. So next up, I need to remove the serpentine belt tensioner. And to do that, I'm going to need to get the power steering pump pulley off. And then I'm also going to need to get the crank pulley off. Don't try to crank nut down there. <clears throat> but instead, if you can see, there are four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on. So just undo those. The power steering pump pulley, you've got three 10 millimeter bolts. A spin. So what I'm going to do is stick a, let's see if you can see that, through one of these holes I'm going to stick through a rod or a screwdriver or something to hold the pulley in place while I undo those 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, as you can see I've got the crank pulley off and I'm about to take the power steering pump pulley off. So what I've done is I put a breaker bar down in there through one of the holes and back onto the uh, power steering pump. So I'm going to go down there and uh, crack those three nuts loose. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the serpentine belt tensioner off right here. This is the power steering pump pulley. 
crank pulley in the back there. And then here's that fan idler. And if you were wondering, there's one long, long bolt that's different from the others that goes in down here on the fan idler. And that's the one you'll put the socket on when you're uh, using the socket to hold this from spinning when you're getting off the fan clutch. So I'm going to come up here. See these are all out. And uh, I can get the uh, uh, timing cover off now. So there's a whole bunch of these little bolts that you'll need to undo. They are a 7 millimeter, and I think there are 17 of them if memory serves. As a side note, you'll see something interesting down here. This is the pattern for the uh, the tensioner to go into. See how it's got those two aligning holes and then the center bolt? You'll also see that's the same as down in here where the fan idler was bolted in. So you can actually put the serpentine temperature in, tensioner into that place. Don't do that, obviously, but it's interesting to note because for different applications of this engine, that's where the idler goes. I believe the London Taxi uses the idler in that place because the London Taxis use this same engine and transmission. Okay, here is our uh, timing belt cover. So you can see that there's 17 of these bolts total in there. They're little things they are kind of hide around. Uh, make sure you get them all and try not to drop them because they're hard to get back. Now if we go up here, here is our timing belt. So at this point, if we wanted to, we could start up and run the engine a little bit and you could see it all move. And we'll do that as a verification after we get the timing belt back on, make sure everything lined up and it's going to work right. So, from this point, the next thing left to do is to uh, mark the engine for timing or insert the timing pins. So you have a couple options here. If you're just going for a timing belt replacement, which, you know, is not the best thing to do if you can replace these uh, idler pulleys and some other stuff. But if you're in the case where you don't want to spend more money and you just need to get it done, you can just go ahead and drop, you know, the $80, $90 on a belt and put it on and call it good. And that's better than not going and replacing the belt. Because like I said, if you break those rockers, you're looking at $800 in parts. So at the very least, if you're just going to replace the belt, you can do that. Now, if you're just going to replace the belt, you don't have to use the timing pins and other locking stuff. You can get away with marking it. Now, there are some marks here on the cams. Let's see if we can find them. So see, there's one down here get that in focus. So there's one down here on my thumb and here's another one down here. Now just because those marks are there right now doesn't mean anything. These cams are actually a press fit on the end. So these uh, these gears have no keeper key, no woodruff key, nothing like that to align them. And they can be aligned at any point. And what you'll often find is that these timing marks, even though there's timing marks here on the gears, they don't necessarily correlate to anything. There's no timing mark here on the rear timing housing or anything like that. So more than that, you can't trust those for anything. There's a timing mark down on the water pump, which if you can see it right down there, there's a timing mark on the water pump. There's no need for a timing mark on the water pump. And then uh, somewhere down here, there is a mark on the injection pump. But uh, there it is, right back in here. Let's see if I can... I'll grab a light for you so you can see that. So there is a timing mark back here on the injection pump pulley. It's right in here, if you can see that. And there is a witness mark for it right down here. So it is possible to align this up and have a witness mark when you're looking at uh, timing the engine. So, and there's some different discussion about whether or not that's necessary or not. Generally, I say, if you found it that way, leave it that way. It's more of an issue when you're retiming an engine from an overhaul or something like that where you're starting from scratch. Okay, so at this point we're ready to uh, get in and start getting this time belt off. <clears throat> now before I take the time belt off, I want to uh, mark my timing point, put in uh, timing pins, uh, cam gear holder, something, because I don't want to lose time on the engine. You can retime the engine, but it's a bit of a complicated procedure and generally you only do that if you're going through a rebuild or if you've had the uh, the intake off to replace the rockers like if your belt breaks. <clears throat> so we got a couple options about how to go about doing this. Because I'm replacing the water pump this time, I'm going to need to pull off the uh, cam pulleys here and then I'll pull off the rear cover here and then we can get down and get the water pump off pretty easily. Um, there's a couple of different ways to go about this whole procedure. The first is, if you're just replacing the belt, which is better to replace the belt than nothing at all. A belt's $80, all new rockers are $800. I'd rather go with the $80 and just put the belt on than replace everything else. 
if you do just the belt, it is possible just to mark the mark the pulleys where they are, take off the belt, and then put it back on, keeping the marks lined up. Sometimes the pulleys like to move around a little bit, and they'll flop and move back and forth. But as long as you get the marks lined back up as you're putting back on the belt, um, you'll keep the correct timing. So that's that's the dirty way to do it, but it's also better than doing damage to your engine. So if you're overdue on your timing belt, and you're going, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on this right now, just spend the money on the $80 belt, get it on, and then later you can come back through and do other things, or just run it like that until it's time for the next belt. Um, so let's say I was just doing the belt and I didn't have any of the specific tools. What I would do is go through and I would put a mark on the tooth here, and then an analogous mark on the cover here, and then do the same someplace about here and here, or wherever you want to do it. Basically someplace so you get two marks on each pulley. So you'd go up and do that and that. Then you go down here, do the same thing on the uh, injection pump pulley right here, give it two marks, and then you'd go down to the crank down here and give it a couple of marks. Now, if you look at it from the front, you'll see there's no way to really mark the front of the crank that nicely. You can go down to the crank and then to the rear part of the timing cover, but that's not really close, so it's hard to line up and see, especially so far down there. What works best is putting a mark down there on the crank itself. So you see, this has been a part once before, and we got a little white mark down there. So what I like to do is put a couple of marks down here, and usually you spread them out. So I'll do one. Well, you can't really see that. Let's try this. I'll do one, like on this tooth, for example, and then do another one over on this tooth. And that way they're separated by a couple of teeth. And as long as you make sure those two marks line back up with the respective teeth, you'll know you've got the crank in the right place. So if I was just doing a belt and nothing else, I would put all those marks everywhere. So I'd put a mark on this pulley, on this pulley, on this pulley, and on this pulley. And doing that, I make sure that I can keep all of those in time. And that's the critical part. The water pump pulley does have a timing mark on it, but there's absolutely no need to have it. The same thing goes on these. There's actually a timing mark right down here and right down here. The thing is, there's no witness mark anywhere on on uh, the rear cover for that. If you look all around here, there's no witness mark for it. There is a mark down here on the injection pump, which we can see it back in here, just barely right past my dirty fingernail there. There's that, and there's a witness mark down here for it. So it is possible to keep uh, the injection pump time looking at you know different witness marks but there's no other witness marks anywhere around so even though there's a mark on here it doesn't it doesn't cross over to anything more than that these are off depending on how it's installed at the factory these will be in different places so I don't know how many teeth are in between these two right now but sometimes you'll see it where you know one's over here and one's down so just because there's a mark on here doesn't really mean anything they can be they can be put on however they want to. These are held on with a press fit, so there's nothing that keeps the gear timed to the cam other than the press fit. So that means that you have to make sure that these are properly, these two gears are properly timed in between each other with the right number of teeth, and then you then you torque down these bolts. And then the only thing that keeps these timed is the torque on them. There is no Woodruff key, there's no keeper, there's nothing else like that. It's completely smooth on the end of it there. So when you're doing this the full way that I'll be doing it, there is uh, a plug over here and there's a plug right down in here that I'll remove and I'll put in two timing pins. So in this case, I have all the right tools. I'm doing a water pump as well, and I'm not just doing it the dirty way, which is just throwing on a belt and calling it good so you don't, you know, destroy $800 worth of rockers. So when I do it this way, I'm going to put in my timing pins, one on the intake side, one on the exhaust side, and then one down on the, the flywheel. There's a hole that goes through the back of the block and then through the flex plate or flywheel, and that keeps that in line. And so when all three of those pins are in, that means the engine is at 90 degrees after top dead center. If you're going through a rebuild or you've had the intake uh, manifold valve cover off to replace the rockers, what you can do is, is set the number one piston to top dead center, which you can find by removing the injector, which if you've replaced the rockers, the injector is going to be out anyway. You can put a small thin rod or maybe a little screwdriver or something down in there so you can feel and see the motion when you've reached top dead center on the number one piston. 
And then when you've reached that number one piston on top dead center, you go down to the crank and turn that crank 90 degrees on over. And then you'll know that you're at 90 degrees after top dead center. You can go down to the flywheel hole, put through your alignment tool in the flywheel hole, and then put in your alignment tool into the cams, put everything together, and then put it and then put on your cam uh, pulleys and timing belt. And that way you'll know everything's set at 90 degrees after top dead center. You do have to be careful because there are some additional holes in the flex plate that you can stick uh, the pin through that are not the small timing pin. So there's these big round holes are about an inch in diameter compared to the little small like quarter inch diameter hole. So it is possible that you can stick it through a big hole. So if you stick it in, you can move it around and you get lots of flop, then you may be through a big hole and you need to turn it and make sure that you are through the timing hole only and not just the big general hole. So since I'm doing it this way where I'm replacing the water pump, what I'm going to do is put in those pins like I said before. I'm going to put the cam gear holder on these. I need to hold these two in place because the timing pins can't hold these with enough torque uh, to break loose these bolts. So you're going to need to use the cam gear holder, then take off these, and then you can pull off the cam gears. With the cam gears out, we'll be able to pull off this rear cover. With the rear cover off, we'll have access to the water pump. We'll undo some bolts, pull the water pump forward. We'll put the new one on, put the rear cover on, put the pulleys back on, then the new timing belt, and that's how we do it. So in this case, we're doing a, uh, a water pump, so that's just a little extra bit of service there. And we'll also be doing the thermostat at the same time since everything's apart. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off the alternator now that needs to come out of the way so I can get in the intake locking pin. Then I'm going to go over here and move a couple of these hoses out of the way, which normally you can just undo this one bolt right back there and kind of pull this hose out of the way and put in the pin. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and undo several of them because I'm replacing the thermostat anyway and I need to get this stuff out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show how you insert the uh, intake and exhaust cam locking pins next.